this is the recipe, the winning recipe from the Platinum Pudding Competition hosted by Fortnum's and Mason's. And this is Gemma's Lemon Swiss Roll and Amaretti Trifle, which won first place. Now, <clears throat> this is a black and white picture, so you can't really, you can't really um, judge the look of it from that. But it does look very pretty with these um, lemon curd Swiss roll swirls and then the orange jelly. Um, I did work out the price. It was going to cost around £43. That's buying everything from scratch, including the alcohol, um, which I don't have. So I would have had to buy it. And it was going to cost too much money. And um, somebody posted on the sun a cheaper version. and um, But it still looked like that. And I thought to myself... Well, it doesn't look very elegant, and once you start sticking that spoon in to try and scoop it out and put it in the bowl, it's going to look an absolute mess, and you might not get a bit of everything. It's supposed to serve 20 people, according to this. Um, but um, what's it going to look like in the dish? That's the question. It might look pretty in the bowl, but what's it going to look like in the dish? Um, I don't think it's going to look very nice at all. So... Um, what I decided to do was try doing something similar to what the sun did and just buy the ingredients and not make them like the tin. I bought some tinned custard, etc. Um, I'm going to use her recipe for the Swiss roll. That's on here. Um, but I'm going to half the ingredients because I'm going to do it for a family of four. So um, I have these glass bowls. So with these bowls, the only, the, the, these you can get from Asda, cost £2 each. And um, so what you could do is you could have like mini kind of, I looked online to see if I could find some lemon mini rolls and I couldn't find any lemon mini rolls. So I thought I'm going to have to make it and just make lemon mini rolls myself. Um, so I've got four dishes here. And I've got, I've just shop bought lemon curd, you can use to spread, you don't have to make your own lemon curd. Although I did buy some lemons and I did buy some oranges, which I might use a zest of in their jelly, because jellies are not usually that flavoursome. So I bought some Hartley's lemon jelly here, which you just add boiling water to, and I bought some, the powder stuff of the sugar free orange jelly I couldn't find the lemon in the powdered one otherwise I would have bought the lemon in the powdered one um, <clears throat> so the candied peel this goes on in the white chocolate to make the shards with and uh, I bought some green and blacks white chocolate I bought two tubs of cream and this is uh, less fat cream um, double cream um, but I might only need the one tub for the four I don't know yet and I bought two tins of custard like Devon custard but I might only need the one tin and I bought two tins of man mandarin segments in juice and um, she used half of it to make a coolie with and she used the other half to go on the trifle and I've bought these really nice pretty hundreds and thousands uh, from Asda. They're a nice orangey colour and I thought they would go nice on the top. And the Amaretti biscuits. I've never had Amaretti biscuits before. Um, but you can see I've been having a little snack. <laughs> and they are absolutely delicious. These um, beautiful little things they are and the taste of caramel when you eat them but they're very crispy and crunchy and the taste of caramel um, so what I think I'll do with these rather than put them on the top layer I'll put them on the bottom layer just a little bit different from what Gemma's done and I've got these from Sainsbury's supermarket but you can get them other places they don't sell them in Asda so you can't buy them there <coughs> So, the first thing I'm going to do is make the Swiss roll. Now, I've never made a Swiss roll before. 
Um, I have like watched the video how to do it. Um, so what I've done is, is I've lined this tin. It says use a Swiss roll tin. I'm not sure if this is a Swiss roll tin or not. <laughs> it might be a Swiss roll tin. I don't know. It's got it's got edges. Um, I've got a bigger one as well in case this is too small. But uh, I'm going to start off with half the ingredients. So for her Swiss roll, um, she was using. If you can see there, she was using four large free range eggs, 100 grams of caster sugar and 100 grams of self-raising flour, butter for greasing. So I've got two large eggs here and I've got just 50 grams of the self-raising flour and 50 grams of the caster sugar. So I've got my oven heating up to 160 degrees fan. Um, so we just have a look at our instructions for the Swiss roll. To make the Swiss rolls, preheat the oven to 160 degree fan or 180 degrees C or gas 4. Grease and line two Swiss roll tins. So I've only got the one lined because I'm only doing one. Um, in a large bowl, beat the eggs and sugar together with a hand whisk for approximately five minutes, like electric whisk, sorry, until light and pale and then use a metal spoon gently fold in the flour Divide between the two tins and bake for 10 to 12 minutes. So that sounds easy enough. So, get a large bowl. So, we need the eggs and the sugar. Two eggs. Four. Two. Sugar and we need electric whisk. That's nice and pale now. Put a lot of air into that with the uh, electric whisk. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to sift that flour. I'm just going to pour this now into this tin. Just going to spread it to the edge.
just trying to even it out a bit to make sure it's not like make sure it's even gonna do that just to level it out so 10 minutes approximately So I'm going to put a layer of crushed amaretti biscuits in the bottom of each dish. So I'm just going to crush these a bit. Just put them in a little bag and just use a rolling pin and bash them. So there's the uh, Swiss roll, it looks a bit bubbly, I don't know why that is. I think I might when I bashed it all of that layer bubbles came to the top, I don't know if that's caused it, but it's a bit bubbly. But it has to be rolled when it's still warm, that's the problem. Just loosening the sides. So before you roll it, you need to make like a cut and it needs to be rolled tight. So you have to try and make a, a cut about one centimetre down the side like that. <clears throat> and then you have to bend it over where that cut is. And then so I think you can roll it with a paper inside, but because I only want mini rolls, I'm only going to do half that way, and we'll do the same on this side. So. I'm going to roll it this way now. So I've got two rolls like that. And I'm just going to cut it down the middle. So I've actually cut the cake down the centre there. Just going to use some scissors. I'm just going to cut up the middle where I've cut with a knife and you have to let it cool while it's rolled So this should be about the right size I want. I'm trying to roll them a little bit tighter. I'm 
I'm just going to put them onto the other tray I've got. Yeah. So, let us now line these bowls with the crushed Amaretti biscuits. So I'm just going to put some in the bottom. You know, normal trifles are normally have sponge fingers in the bottom I mean if you've got like anyone who I think these biscuits have got almonds in them let's have a look it just says may contain nuts so they do taste almondy, so if you've got anyone who's allergic to nuts, you could use a different biscuit or like ginger biscuits, or you could use sponge fingers, which you can buy in supermarkets. So these will absorb the, the jelly when the jelly goes in. So they're ready now for the Swiss roll and the jellies. So we need to make the jelly now. So for the lemon jelly, it tells you on the back here that you need half a pint of boiling water and then you add half a pint of cold water. <coughs> and you have to break these into little cubes. I just love jelly cubes. I think they just look so beautiful when the light catches them, don't they? The the work of art in themselves, I think. <laughs> so for the lemon jelly, let's just break. Actually, it's got a nice strong smell of lemons. So I probably won't have to put any lemon into it. So that's a less ingredient you need. Because we need to think about the cost as well. People are struggling with costs at the moment with the, all the bills going up. And I mean, if you're having a street party or having a celebration anyway, you're going to be spending money. So, you know, the more you can save, the better. So this lemon jelly... It smells really strong of lemons, so you probably won't need to add any lemons to that, so I'm not going to. I'm going to keep the lemons for something else later on. And I should have gotten an orange one, I think, of them. But never mind, I've got the powder one. So the powder one, let's find the instructions on here. Exactly the same ingredients, so yeah. One of these sachets, I don't know if you can read it, it's very pale writing and very small writing. <clears throat> so you add half a pint of boiling water and then you add another half a pint of cold water. So we'll put the orange granules into another bowl. The difference is these take a while to dissolve these. Um, you stir and stir and stir and they never dissolve. Um, whereas the powder will dissolve quickly. But if it had a yellow, a lemon jelly with the powdered one, I would have bought that one instead. So now we need 285 mils of boiling water for that and 285 mils of boiling water for that. Um, 
I think I'll wait until I've done the Swiss rolls. I'll wait until they've cooled down and then uh, we'll line it first with the Swiss rolls. All we need to do for that is spread on the lemon curd and then we can line the little dishes and then I'll make the jelly after that. So here's the first one. So we just have to take the greaseproof paper. Spreading this on fairly thickly. It smells delicious. So now we just roll it gently. It's not done, it's one. I've got some spillage. Put a little spillage there. And then we use a sharp knife just to cut off the edges. So what I might do is put these in the fridge a little bit before I actually cut them properly. If people in your family don't like lemon curd, you could use strawberry jam or you could even buy mini rolls because mini rolls have got, you can get mini rolls very easily that's got strawberry jam in it and you can just buy ready made mini rolls. Just put a bit more curd in because the other one looked a bit uh, it looked like it was a bit lacking in filling. See what this one looks like when I roll it. Oozing out there. I think it needs to be cold before you cut it really because it's just going to like... I think I might freeze them actually, put them in the freezer. 
just for half an hour might be easier to cut it without it squashing like this hmm delish So the powder dissolves much quicker than the, the lumps of jelly. So once this once this is dissolved, you, you add another half a pint. So there's 285 mils of boiling water in there, and 285 mils of boiling water in the orange. I know there's far too much jelly here for what I need. <clears throat> so, Gemma's recipe, she had the orange and the le the, uh, the orange and the lemon mixed together in as one jelly. So I'm going to do that as well. So I'm just going to pour the orange jelly into the lemon jelly. So we now need to add a pint of cold water into that. I've only added half a pint. Um, just so the jelly is a little bit thicker. So we've got one and a half pints of liquid all together in there. So this has to cool down before you put it in your dishes. And we need to put the Swiss roll around the edges as well. Now I've just had a taste, I've just put some of it in a jug here. Um, I've just had a taste of it and it doesn't, it's not that tangy once it's been watered down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little bit of lemon extract. <clears throat> So I'm just adding half a teaspoon into and half a teaspoon into that one. I think because it's oily, it's just floating about in the water. It does taste a bit more tangy now. Because I've only added... Because I've only added like um, half of the liquid I could also put some juice of some oranges and lemons in there, I'm thinking. So 
So I've got this little, it's supposed to be a lemon juice there, but I can use it for the oranges as well. You haven't got a juicer, you can just squeeze it like that. Can to get the juice out. So, it hasn't got very much out, but it's going into the jelly mix. In Gemma's recipe, she said to sprinkle caster sugar on them. I don't know why, really, because um, as soon as you uh, get the jelly poured over them, the jelly will dissolve the sugar. So we need to cut them now, try and get them even, so I'm just going to cut them at the same time. We don't want them too thick because I need to go around the bowl. So, mm. it is very nice, sponge is nice. So, we've got 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. So they can have five each. So we can start these. around the edge of the dish so that's five you can have a look at that got the Swiss rolls in one of them so I've poured some of the jelly mixture over this one you can see the cakes have swelled up the little Swiss rolls have swelled up and uh, I think I'll, I'll do that now and then put them in the fridge it says on her recipe you need to put them in the fridge for three hours after pouring in the jelly before you can put the custard on. So I'm about the biscuits are floating about. Press it into the jelly mold. So 
Oh. Put these in the fridge to set. It probably won't take three hours because they're just in individual bowls. It might only take two hours. So I've opened the custard and I'm just going to spoon it over the top of the jelly. The jelly does seem to be set now. Probably will need the two tins by the looks of things. Right, I'm going to put this back in the fridge. So I've boiled the mandarin so they're almost like mush now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to sieve it into a bowl. And I've got, well, I've got three gelatin leaves that I'm going to put in this because I need, I haven't got any arrowroot. <clears throat> so I'm just going to use gelatin leaves to thicken it up a bit. I'm just going to sieve that again. I'm just going to sieve it into this jug. Now this has to cool completely. And then I'm going to put it in the fridge for a bit until it starts to thicken. And then I'm going to spread it on top of the custard layer. So I'm now going to put this double cream in the bowl. So in this bowl I'm putting in two 270ml cartons of double cream. So that's more or less 540ml. All together. I'm 
and I'm going to add 100 grams of icing sugar to it because I like my cream sweet on the top. You don't want sweet cream on the top, you don't have to add the icing sugar. And I'm just going to just put it. So I'm just going to put this cream in the fridge until it's needed. So to make the chocolate shards to go on the top while you're waiting for your coolie to um, cool down in the fridge, you could make your chocolate shards. So um, I've broken the chocolate up and put it in a bowl. You can either use a bain marie where you put it over a bowl of, of boiling water, simmer in water. Or you can just microwave it. When I microwave it, I microwave it for 30 seconds. Then I take it out, give it a stir. Microwave again for 30 seconds. Take it out, give it a stir. It usually takes around two minutes to make, to soften the chocolate. And then I've got the candied peel. Um, I don't stock candied peel. I had to buy um, a whole tub of it. Uh, I'm not going to use all of this, obviously. Um, what she says in her recipe is if it's too wet or sticky to ro roll it in um, caster sugar. Um, I think I think I will do that. It is a bit sticky. So I'm just going to put some in a bowl. I'm not going to use all this a lot, but. I'm going to sprinkle some caster sugar on the top. So now we're like jelly tots. You know, jelly tots the sweets, round trees jelly tots. I don't know if you can still buy those. Right, so I've got my candied peel. I'm going to make it with the chocolate. And um, I've got a tray with some greaseproof paper on there to pour the chocolate onto. So I've now got my chocolate melted, you can see there, so I'm just going to pour it into this tray. There's probably not enough to coat the whole tray. I'm just trying to spread it out a bit.
So I haven't covered the full tray, about half of it. So if you wanted to cover the full tray, you would need an extra bar. And I've got two bars of chocolate in here. Um, so now I'm just going to sprinkle these on. I think that's enough. So I'm just going to let that cool down now. And then um, once it's cool, I'll put it in the fridge. <coughs> so the coolie was taking ages in the fridge. So what I did was I put it in the freezer for half an hour. So now it's thickening up a bit now. So I can now spread this on top of the custard. I'm going to remove the cling film. In Gemma's recipe, she says to put biscuits on. But I, I don't think I've got enough room for that, so I'm not going to do that. So, um, And she says to put the coolie on top of the biscuits. Um, but I'm just going to leave the coolie like that. And then I've got room to pipe the cream on top. So I've got this um, piping bag with this star nozzle in the bottom here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, pipe the cream on top of the like orange coolie. So I'm just going to fill this piping bag with the cream. I just I had put it in a different bowl so it would fit in the fridge better than the big bowl. Obviously, if you're using fresh cream, you can't really leave it out of the fridge, otherwise the cream will just run. Um, so if you're going to serve it, it would have to be in the fridge right until service. If you are having a street party, and uh, it, it might be better off using butter cream rather than fresh cream for the top. Because it's less likely to run all over then. <clears throat> Unless you can keep it very cold just before serving. <clears throat> There's a lot of calories in this pudding. Um, I'm going to try and work out the calorie content and the cost, the total cost. And I'll give you that at the end. And I'll also work out how much time it's taken. Um, I did start making these yesterday, so this is another day. <laughs> um, it's it's going to, I mean, it says on the recipe two hours, but when you think about it, you've got to let the jelly set, you've got to let the coolie set. Um, so it's, it's going to take a lot more than, it takes about two or three hours for the jelly to set. So you've got to wait for them to set before you can move on. So. The time on there is wrong. I think really they should be honest if they want people to, to make this on the day, they need to be honest about how long it takes to do. <clears throat> Otherwise people could get into serious trouble trying to make them on the day. 
So you can see there the cream's coming out so I'm just going to pipe a swirl like that on the top. So I haven't really got a lot of room for the cream, it's just going to have to go directly on the top of the jelly because um, I filled it right to the top. So, so I'm just going to do a simple swirl around the edge. I might do like another piping like that. Just so it looks a bit swirly. Well, that's one of them. And then I'm going to sprinkle some of these hundreds and thousands on the top. Very pretty. And then I'm going to put one of those amaretto, amaretto biscuits in the middle and then when the shards are cold, in the, I've just stuck them in the freezer to try and get them cold quick and then I can stick the shards in. Or I might even stand this up like that. So I'll put this back in the fridge. Remember, these are just a practice. <laughs> That's not the Platinum Jubilee yet, so I'm not really worried about perfection at the moment. <clears throat> so this time I might just go up and down like that, around the edge. Looks pretty, doesn't it? So where's my little sprinkles? I'm going to stand the biscuit in the centre like that. Go in the fridge. Now it's a massive trifle when you think about it. It's probably two. Too much for one person to eat. <laughs> you might be able to half these, in fact. You might be able to split it into two servings. So the chocolate is now set from the freezer. Um, so I'm just going to half it first. Try. It's already going in the shards. Oh. So I'll just put them a bit big for the I'll put it on the because I don't want the shards too long I mean for the big trifle that made sense but take it off the paper so if we cut it into 
try and cut it into like a square and then a small square and then cut it in diagonally like that It's melting already. It melts very quick once you take it out of the fridge and if you touch it with your warm hands. It's delicious. I think green and black white chocolate is the best I've ever tasted. The best white chocolate I've ever tasted that is. Just going to put this back in the fridge for a bit before it melts completely. In the see how quickly it's melting. So on the deer, if it's a warm deer, when you're having a street party. These are going to be melted before you even get outside. But if you're just having a... Uh, see how quick that smell It's not even that warm in here. If you're just having a get-together in the house, then it should be okay. This in the freezer. So I'm just going to decorate one with the chocolate shards. Um, I think the best thing to do is not to put the chocolate shards on until you're actually ready to serve. Um, if you want to put the chocolate shards on, you don't have to. So um, you just stick them in the cream so they're standing up. I think I've got about four, enough for four for each. <coughs> That's it finished. So that's the. I'm just going to put these back in the fridge because I don't want to serve it yet. In the freezer, I should say. Um, so that's it finished. My version of the Gemma's. Uh, what's it called again? The Gemma's Lemon Swiss Roll in Amaretti Trifle. So let's just have a better look at it. I'll take the camera off here and have a look at the mini roll swirls at the bottom. And you can see the layer of custard. You can see the Amaretti biscuits on the bottom with the jelly. Then you've got the layer of custard. And then you've got the coolie, then the cream, and then the shards on the top. 
with the Amberelli biscuit, like the jewel in the crown in the middle there. <clears throat> so I think it's probably too much for one person. Um, you can serve it for one person and they probably won't eat it all but um, if you half it though it's not going to look elegant. And this was the reason why I did it so it would look elegant um, to serve uh, to your guests because uh, the trifle that Gemma's got in the big dish once you serve that what's it going to look like? It's just going to look like a pile of mess in the middle of the bowl isn't it? And um, so I wanted it to look elegant looks elegant probably when you first take it out onto the table but once you put it in the bowl it's just going to look like a mess so that's why I decided to do individual ones and I thought it might look more elegant to serve to your guests so it is sad really that I had to alter a lot of it because time cons it's very time consuming um, if I did make all the elements that she asked me to make in the recipe, for example, if I made the lemon curd from scratch, and if I made the jelly from scratch using the gelatin leaves and using the oranges and boiling the the, the, the peel, if I made me on custard, if I made me on amaretti biscuits, I did make the coolie, um, but then it was tinned mandarins, not fresh fruit. And then, um, so if I did all of that myself, I think it's going to take probably twice as long as what it took using the elements um, that I used. On this recipe, she has got she has got tips telling you to practically do what I did, um, just use packet jelly and ready-made custard and um, bought biscuits. So really. You're not really cooking, you're just putting together ingredients out of a tin or out of a tub. And uh, to me that's not really a winning recipe if you're just doing that and if you have to do that because it's too time consuming. Um, it was supposed to be a people's pudding for the people. Um, so everyone could make it. Um, I have been able to make it but it's been very, very time consuming. And um, even if I just made the big one... And if it would have been, I mean, it still took many hours just to do these little ones with the ready-made stuff. But if I was to make it from scratch, I mean, she must have been in that kitchen all day. Or she would have had the chefs helping her. Well, we did see one of the chefs helping her with a Swiss roll, taking the paper, telling her how to take the paper off and stuff. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if she did get assistance to do it. But, you know... The chefs really, they should have, I mean, they were supposed to test the recipes, not just read them. They were supposed to actually make the recipes. And to me, I don't think she, the, the chef has actually made these recipes before the final people were chosen because they would have seen how time consuming it was and would have realised it's not really what people could make at home. And that was the whole intention for people to make them at home. So really, I think what's happened is they've looked at the recipe, they thought it sounded good, it looked good on the picture, so then they just decided, yes, we'll put that one through. It should be easy for people to make, but it's not. I mean, if you had to make your own amaretti biscuits and you had to make your own jelly with the lemons and the oranges and and um, make your own Swiss roll. Well, I did make my own Swiss roll, didn't I? Um, but, uh, you know, it, it is... So here we are, here is the finished product of these individual Amaretti trifles. They do look very pretty, I love the little um, candied peel on the chocolate, I think that's really attractive and they taste nice as well, because I've tried a bit. Um, but really the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So Will I make this on the day? No. <laughs> It takes too long to make and basically all it is is a trifle really. So uh, on the day I'm going to make my own recipe, the recipe that I submitted originally which was the Queen Bonnet uh, entremets. Uh, didn't even get past the first round my entremets. At least I think they look elegant 
and the tea is delicious. You've got the almond biscuit on the bottom. You've got the white chocolate mousse with the raspberry jelly. And the look, the, I think they look really stunning, you know. And the Queen does wear a lot of bonnets, so it was apt. And it, I thought they were fit for a Queen. I have made a video on how to make these entremets if you wanted to do that for your garden party or your celebrations. You can find the link below for the video on those so you can see from the chart I've made here the cost in pounds and the total calorie intake so you can see the total cost to make these four desserts is 20 pound 65 pence so that works out at around five pence five pound per person and the calorie content 1,393 calories per individual bowl <laughs> and uh, that is a lot of calories that is more calories than probably like a lot of people would need for the whole day um so um you know it is very high in calories all that cream and custard how does it taste well, if you like sweet trifles, you'll enjoy this. It does taste very sweet. Uh, you've got the sweet cream, the sweet jelly, the sweet coolie, the sweet custard, the sweet biscuits, the sweet chocolate. Very, very sweet. Um, it, I've already mentioned the calories. It is very, very high in calories. Um, but like I said, you could half it. You could use smaller bowls. If I was making it again, like for children, for example, I would use smaller balls and I would um, I would probably miss off the custard. It's not really, I mean, custard, once, it, once it's mixed with everything else, it, you can't really taste the custard. So I would miss off the custard completely. Um, and I would use less cream and um, I would probably add more texture somehow. Um, so if you were making it yourself, that is, um, you might, if you enjoy trifles, you will enjoy this. Um, I always remember trifles from being a child at birthday parties, you know. And you used to be able to buy those birds, um, boxes of trifles, with, which used to have all of the ingredients in the box. And you would just take everything out of the box and make it from the box. I don't know if they still sell them, but it might be worth looking into that in case you can't just buy a ready-made birds trifle, which is almost the same as this, to be honest. Um... You could try making some of my entremets. I didn't really enjoy making this trifle, to be fair. I found it a bit of a chore. But when I made the entremets, I just found it so enjoyable because you, you're doing something different. You're using the moulds and you're creating these beautiful shapes and then you're decorating it with this glossy cotton and you're also um, decorating it with those little flowers i just found it so enjoyable to create those entremets and they are delicious to eat i have to say this um i didn't get past the first round i know that i don't know why i thought at first it was because there was too many components but looking at Gemma's recipe i think she's got more components than what i had so i don't know why mine wasn't chosen but um you know it's up to you if you want to, to make like Gemma's trifle or if you want to make um, something completely different. It, just have fun. It is the, the Queen's Jubilee, the Platinum Jubilee, 70 years on the throne. And she is now 96 years old and she's still doing remarkably well. So the day, the 5th of June, is to celebrate Her Majesty. So make sure you're having a good time. You know, whatever you're baking, if you're baking or if you're going to a street party or someone else's um, hosting, you know, just make sure you have a good time. I think most of the street parties are happening around lunchtime. You can find maps. There is a map. I can't remember the link. If I find the link, I'll put it below where you can see where all the street parties are in the country. So if you're not having a street party, you might want to have a little wander around and just see what everyone else is doing. It might be fun just to wander around the streets and seeing everybody having fun. I think most of the street parties are happening around lunchtime. Um, we're going to have a family tea, not a lunch. Um, so whatever you decide to do, just make sure you have fun. Thank you for watching. Until the next video, bye for now.